Welcome to the Really Know Your Customer podcast with your hosts, Betsy Westhafer and Tony Bodo. Join Betsy and Tony as they dive in with highly successful C-suite leaders who have grown successful organizations by creating a laser focus on listening to their customers and building deep customer relationships. Now, it's time to join Betsy and Tony for the Really Know Your Customer show. Hi, and welcome to the Really Know Your Customer podcast. My name is Tony Bodo, and I'm here with Betsy Westhafer. Today, we are interviewing John Norton, who is a combat veteran and also an entrepreneur who's been building his company over the last few years. And he has some really interesting perspectives on how to work with the customer in the product development cycle. We want to talk about that today. Yeah, Tony, I'm so excited for this interview. Um, In our prep session, we just got to hear some really good nuggets that I think will be awesome for our audience to learn from. And it's just a very exciting, relatable product. Everybody's going to understand what it is he does and why. And so I'm just really excited to talk to John. So John, welcome. Uh, It's great to be here, Betsy and Tony. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's kick it off with just give us some background into your experience, your entrepreneurial journey, where you are now, how you got here. We'd just love to know a lot more about you personally. Sure. So, uh, so I am a, I'm a former Army Ranger and a combat veteran, did, uh, did two, uh, two deployments uh, to Iraq. And, um, and also my last duty assignment, I served as a, as a ranger instructor for uh, for U.S. Army Ranger School. I was really privileged to get to work with some of the best leaders uh, leaders in the uh, in the U.S. Army. And uh, and then uh, after I left the military, uh, I started my family and it also uh, started my business, which is called Rope Safe uh, USA. So tell us a little bit about your family. Sure. Yeah. The, I got, uh, they're all upstairs right now. So, uh, you may hear them come tromping in. Um, I think it's socially accepted now, but, uh, <laughs> I've got, uh, I've got uh, a beautiful daughter and, uh, and two boys that, uh, that are just, just really everything to me. And really, you know, you know, some of my deeper motivations for wanting to be an entrepreneur, uh, in the first place. And, um, I live in Connecticut and I've been married to, uh, you know, a, a very understanding, uh, very understanding wife on my, uh, on my entrepreneurial journey. Um, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, one of the things that we really loved about when we were talking to you in the prep was just this concept of how you got this product to market. So can you walk us through that, um, how you first came up with the idea, what the need was, the problem you're solving, and just kind of walk us through what your product's all about and why you're so passionate about it. Sure. Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to add value to, uh, to your listeners. And the, uh, just to rewind the clock a little bit, uh, during my last duty assignment, uh, I, was a, I was a ranger instructor and, uh, and I was responsible for the safety of over 1,000 Ranger students per year doing military mountaineering. So everything from uh, rappelling to, uh, to, to mountain rescue, raising and lowering, uh, climbing, everything to do with ropes and, uh, and cliffs. So, you know, one morning I, I you know, witnessed a student whom I was responsible for lose his footing while on rappel, which is for those who are, don't know, it's somebody who's sliding down a rope. Uh, on a from a vertical surface and he was on rappel he was attached to the rope and he lost his footing and the uh, the force of his fall what he did is he he pendulumed uh, like a you know like a grandfather clock and that force you know sheared right through our rope protector that we were using at the time which was cut you know cut fire hose and um, fortunately the rope held um, but that was that was just a very scary moment um, and, uh, you know, we really didn't have a good solution, you know, for, for protecting our ropes at the time. We did the best with what we had. Um, but, I, that, you know, that, that, that moment always stuck with me. Um, and even after I left the military service, I'm a, I'm a climber myself. So I started to get back into, uh, into climbing. And I had this very, very same problem. How do I protect um, my ropes from shearing on the edge of sharp surfaces, rock, uh, in firefighter cases, buildings or construction workers, steel. Um, and so I, I started to, uh, I started to play around based on that need that I, I needed to, you know, I, I, I 
I've seen this problem uh, in my past experience. You know, I currently have this uh, this problem now, and so uh, so I invented a uh, so I created a a very simple prototype of this product. In fact, I look back on it now; it's quite embarrassing. It's very ugly, but um, it was novel, and um, and so I I I I shopped it around a little bit to the just to, just to local to my local climbing community and just just asked for their feedback and you know come to find out that was response was wow that, that that's that's really innovative that's new um you know that and started to get an understanding of the problem that you know do you do you also have this problem is, is it just me or do you also experience the the difficulty of protecting ropes from you know uh, abrasion and uh, and at worst failure uh, and come to find out they had. So, um, so, you know, I don't know if you want me to, you know, walk through, you know, the entire the totality of the journey, but that's really what, uh, you know, what kicked it off for me, uh, Betsy. Well, one of the things that stands out to me and, and it was a phrase you used while we were in prep session. And I think you just alluded to it here. And that is, is the problem real? And it, you repeated that, I think, three or four times, at least I've got it in my notes that often. And I think to, to really tap on that right now, and, and you, know, you ask the community that you're in, you ask the cl other climbers out there, and you're getting this response, yeah, that's something new, that's something different, that's something we need. So take us through kind of your evaluation process of, is this a real problem? Is there a market here? Um, and, and ultimately, just for the listeners, this all ties back into customer experience because if the customers aren't experiencing a problem, they're not going to buy your solution. I, I mean, you, you said it best right there, Tony. Um, and so the, the evolution of the, of the product development process you know, started there at a very local community with a very, you know, a very basic prototype. Um, you know, very, I, I invested, yeah, I think, Forty dollars into into developing it. So very simple, um, and you know, based on based on those uh, interactions with prospective customers, uh, I I learned that there 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 was at least um, you know at the local level a, a need for this solution. So um, based on on some feedback that I had received from uh, that that local climbing community. I went and developed uh, a second, uh, a setting, second uh, variation of the product, and um, concurrently, I, I also think it's very important to uh, once I validated that there is a uh, there is a problem, you know, I, I did seek uh, intellectual property protection, and I uh, was able to do it uh, very inexpensive through my local uh, you know, local university that uh, that actually did all my patent work uh, in trademark registration for free, just just you know. Point that out there to your listeners. Uh, they're your local colleges. Uh, they're, they're students that are eager to sink their teeth into real world, you know, real world uh, design and patent ideas. So, um, uh, and w concurrently, because that is obviously a very large, uh, long process. Um, I took a, I took the second adaptation uh, variation of Rope Safe, and I, I shopped it around to uh, to the Department of Defense. So. I, uh, I I sent the product down to uh, to uh, Fifth Ranger Training Battalion, uh, several several other major military organizations within the Department of Defense, and uh, including Navy SEAL teams, uh, Green Berets, Army Rangers, and I started to uh, I started to gather a lot of data based on based on uh, actual field testing by the customer. And, uh, and so I, I was able to take all that, that data and start, and start formulating, you know, it, uh, further adaptations to help solve their problems. But one thing during those interactions that, uh, that I really honed in on to, as you mentioned before, is this a problem that you are experiencing? You know, how severe is this problem? Um, is this, a, you know, does this, do you already have an effective solution? So trying to tease out from the customers you know, is this actually a real problem? You know, do you have a solution already that you're using? Uh, what are the, uh, you know, is that solution effective? Um, and, uh, and what are some of the problems that you experience? Um, and concurrently, then asking about, uh, about how does, does the rope safe solution, which is the name of the, the commercial name of the product, does that actually solve this 
this particular problem that you are experiencing. Um, and, and, and also one thing I was very careful to, to not do is, is validate my own biases. Um, I think that you can really run into a trap of, uh, because we all think our, our, our invention is the best, um, to, to, you know, fall into a confirmation bias and, and asking questions like, Hey, Tony, do you like this product? And more often than not, they're going to say, yeah, it's, it's cool. It's great. Um, you really want to, you really want to, and I, I really focused on what is it that you don't like about this product? What is, what is problematic about the current design that I have? Um, how would you make this better? You know, uh, would you actually invest in this, uh, in this solution? Um, and so those, those questions that really tease out um, really helped me kind of gather just a tremendous amount of data from multiple sources and, uh, and create a, a follow on variation, uh, which is very close to the commercial solution. John, I want to take that a step further. And you had talked to us about um, your experience where you were, actually embedded with the the customer at the event um, tech warrior and yep. so can you kind of walk us through I, what i would love for our audience to hear is like tactically how do you get that customer information how do you put yourself in a position where your customers are going to be willing to, and and available to share their feedback with you so let's go a little bit into the weeds on on how you did that at tech warrior yeah, absolutely, and I'll, I'll also share uh, the the predecessor to that going down to the uh, to the fire department in New York uh, with multiple of their their rescue engines, and um, you know I I remember you know long uh, long trips into the city to uh, to to spend uh, to spend nights and, and evenings with uh, with with the uh, with the the FDNY, and those 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 sessions were completely invaluable. Um, you know, one, they're just, you get to better understand who your customers are, what's important to them, um, you know, why they choose to serve in that respective profession. So there's a lot of information you also gather by being just in person. That's, you know, that's, you know, important. Um, but, uh, you know, in addition to, I, I got to understand how firefighters operate. I'm a soldier, I, you know, but um, I had a hypothesis that this solution would be useful in the fire protection services industry. So, you know, I got to uh, I got to ride with Rescue One, which is an amazing experience. Uh, I got to be down at uh, at Ladder One Eleven and Engine Two Fourteen in Brooklyn, and just and watch how these guys train. And they are incredible. They're 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 highly highly trained professionals in you know, in high angle rope rescue. And, you know, I also got to learn, you know, what were, you know, what were some of the shortcomings of the product? And based on, based on the, you know, real world training, you know, me sitting on a ledge with a firefighter using the solution, you know, going over the top of uh, going over the edge to go conduct their a, a rescue mission, you know, that, that information was incredibly invaluable. So fast forward to, uh, and, and it helped me you know, helped me strengthen the product, helped me get it to the right length, you know, because the, the devil really is in the detail. Um, and, uh, and fast forward to uh, the, the Tech Warrior Ops event based in, uh, in Dayton, Ohio in uh, June of last year, um, there was an Air Force uh, pararescue uh, team. Uh, and for those that don't know, uh, the, the Air Force pararescue community is, uh, they're very, very highly trained uh, I, I call them combat surgeons, um, but they're technically not uh, surgeons, but they're just incredibly trained uh, in uh, medical professionals, but also in high angle rescue. Um, so uh, by, by timing and, and luck, they were there and they were doing a, uh, a, a rope rescue mission uh, in a very complex environment. And I happened to bring several of the, uh, of the rope safe salute uh, devices for them to use. Uh, and I was able to work with them for an entire day. And, uh, you know, I got to really understand that respective, uh, that respective customer because each one of them is, is, is unique in their own way and got to understand that, yeah, this is a solution that, that really adds value. Um, so, so that experience, um, you know, that, that experience was, uh, was invaluable. One of the things that I found interesting is you talk about this, 
the, the segmentation of customers, we call it from a data perspective, right? Um, but you told you were telling us too that there was a commonality that you saw, and you didn't want to go too far in the weeds on any particular specifications until you knew that that would serve a wider audience to start with. So take us through a little bit of of that process. You know, eventually you you'll be branching out and creating products and all of that. But that initial product, if someone's trying to go to market today, what would you recommend there? Yeah, I great question, Tony. Uh, it's it's casting in a broad net. So uh, that that particular experience you're talking about uh, was uh, I, I had flown I, I flew down to uh, Virginia Beach and to go meet with a a very famous uh, SEAL team unit. Um, one that um, that was responsible for the uh, the killing of uh, of Osama bin Laden, but uh, very humbling experience. And you know that particular unit, uh, I got to spend uh, a day with them as well, and and you know, observe them as uh, as they would implement this uh, this solution. And so uh, during during that process, uh, you know they they had uh, they had some design recommendations that I had not heard before. Um, and it, it, it was, I'll admit, it, it was very, very tempting to, uh, to make, to, 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 to not, div, you know, go forward and, 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 and make a design change based on their feedback. Um, but it was the first data point that I heard it, you know, I hadn't heard it from, you know, all the other army units that I had been to. I hadn't heard it from the fire departments. And so I, I, ha I had to make a choice. Is, is this just a customization that this particular cus this customer is, is looking for? Or is there a universal application across multiple industries? And, uh, you know, come to find out, I, I vetted that idea uh, across a couple other, uh, you know, of my testing partners. And, you know, it, it really, it just didn't, uh, it didn't flush out that there would be much of a value add um, to, to multiple, you know, multiple across multiple industries. So I ended up not doing it. And I, I think it's important to note that that uh, that particular testing partner then became a customer, even though I didn't do what they had asked me exactly to do. Um, because I, I, you know, I, and I, I ended up explaining some of the logic behind it. But um, uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's really easy uh, especially when you 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 know you, you want to please your your testing you know audience you, you want to do what you you want to do what they say, um, but you, I think you really have to be you know going with a hypothesis about uh, about um, you know the efficacy of this product, but you you, you just got to validate it across multiple different customers. Yeah, John, I think that is such a key point to make is the discipline it requires not to do everything that your potential customers and customers ask for and that you have to be very discerning with that feedback. Um, it can be very costly to try to customize every solution for every customer or prospect. I think that's a, a really good segue into the next thing I want to talk about, which is the, the mindset of an entrepreneur and the journey and the discipline and the persistence, all of those things that you know, obviously the military mindset ties in so well for, and that's why Tony and I have talked about this a lot. We love veteran entrepreneurs because there's so much that people that have served bring to the business world in terms of leadership and discipline and mindset. So can you talk to us a little bit about what that means in your particular scenario? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So, um, yeah, one thing that that I will say is uh, is is very early on in the uh, in the product development you know, phase, you know, I you know, I just it's hard not to be very very emotionally invested in your uh, in your product, and uh, and I know I certainly was when I sent uh, when I sent a very you know a, a, an ugly prototype down to and I say ugly but a very early uh, and low cost prototype. Uh, down to uh, down to a, a customer down in uh, at in the Fort Benning, Georgia area. You know, I I, I didn't I didn't know how that um, that testing was going to go. You know, so it, and it was very nerve wracking to get a phone call thereafter, and uh, in knowing that um, you know with with a few simple words, I mean, they could really you know make or break your product. I guess you could say so. Um, but uh, you know, having the uh, the willingness to to to, I think it's important to have that the willingness to ask those 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 tough questions, 
um, that, that you don't want to hear the answer to. You don't, nobody, you don't want to hear that you, there's a flaw or an error in your, in your product. But I would argue that's exactly what you want to hear. You, you, you want to hear the bad news. Um, and so this prospective customer uh, said, you know, he very clearly said, hey, there, there is value here in what you developed, but you need to do this X, Y, and Z. And, uh, and, and those, you know, th those recommendations uh, wouldn't have not have come up if I just asked simple questions like, do you like this product? You know, and, um, but it was more, you know, what do you not like about this? You know, how would you do this differently? What, what is it, what testing do I need to have done on this to, you know, to build your confidence in the solution? And so um, that may not have been exactly what you were referring to, Betsy, but I did want to you know, make that, you know, reemphasize that, uh, that point that it, it took some, uh, you know, some emotional strength. To, to be able to ask some of those hard questions. Yeah, I think that that's exactly what I was looking for, that emotional strength plus then the discipline to A, act on that feedback and, and know that that's how you play the long game, right? Is being able to take that feedback, discern it, and then decide how is that going to help me build my company. That's, that's, that's awesome. I, and, and I, I, I wanted to bring up, uh, you know, efficiency versus effectiveness. You know, it, it would be a, you know, the, the way in which I went about developing this product would be arguably not a very efficient process, but it was very effective, uh, you know, and we have had, you know, sales in the defense, the first responder, the construction industry, and, uh, and we're, we're just on a, on a, on a nice growth path um, because we, we took the time to, to go out and, and get, you know, feedback from within multiple industries and, and synthesize all that information to develop a solution that works across, you know, that doesn't require customization for each industry and vertical that we go into. It's a, it's a solution that works. Doesn't matter if you're a firefighter, if you're a high angle construction worker that uses you know, life safety ropes, if you are a soldier that's rappelling out of a helicopter, you know, they're, uh, you know, this, this, uh, this is, is, it's, it's a universal tool. So, um, yeah. One of the things that, that you talk about too, and we've heard this from other entrepreneurs who are early stage is that it wasn't just about validating the product and what improvements need to be made. It was also when you were embedded with your customer, I think that's the term you used uh, when we talked before you, you learned who had to approve the transaction? What was the process? What do you have to go through to actually get the thing purchased? Because you can develop a great product, but if you don't understand that part of it as an entrepreneur, you're still dead in the water. And you, you just, you, uh, it's hard to gather that information. Uh, I, I shouldn't say that just, just over the phone, but there, you're exactly right, Tony. So, you know, at least in my industries uh, in, in the multiple industries that, uh, that I am in, uh, each one of them has a unique and distinct decision-making process, and uh, and there are there are influencers that that influence the decision makers, and there's a lot of subtleties that uh, that you really have to understand in order to uh, you know to to, to be effective uh, to make an effective sale, and uh, you know all of that information I will say had had come from those those face-to-face -face and over-the-phone interactions and and asking some of those questions you know after after understanding that there actually is value here in this solution. So Tony, tell me who, uh, you know, who else within your organization has to approve this, this type of purchase? Um, and, or are there others that really have to validate the efficacy of this product? Uh, you know, is it was just you or is there, is there a subject matter expert within your organization that really has to, has to, has to look at this and, you know, asking those questions helps you tease out, what the uh, approval process is for, um, and uh, each industry, there's uh, each customer is a little bit unique, uh, but there tends to be similarities across the industry. Like the Department of Defense, there is a there is a very clear pathway, I guess you could say. Uh, once 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 you understand, you know what the process is. There's a relatively, you know, that that tends to be universal across multiple organizations. Um, but you need to know the who you need to know who, and you might share with me that, oh yeah, John, you're absolutely right. I have to go, uh, talk to, uh, master Sergeant Smith and he's really have to, he's, he's going to need to see my, your testing data. 
on this product before we can, you know, approve uh, the, the use of this, uh, this system. And, oh, by the way, we have to run this by our Sergeant Major of Safety, um, and he's got to give this the blessings. And, and then we got to get approval from our, 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 uh, our, our logistics shop. So, you know, you, you, you wouldn't know that, you know, in, in, in having that, having that, 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 uh, that engaging in testing with, uh, with your customers, they're going to be in the, if they see value in your solution, they are going to want to help you to, uh, to complete that sale. They're going to, they're going to be your customer advocates. They're going to be your product advocates. And they're going to be like, Hey, John, I got you. I'm going to, uh, you, know, you know, send me your test data. I'm going to shop it around to uh, internally. And I'm going to get all the approvals for you. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that, that, that only happens when you, you ask those, uh, those very specific questions. John, we, you know, it's, it's a very well-known fact that the military has an amazing culture, you know, the, and I've, I've seen that with members of my family that are in the military, just that brotherhood, sisterhood, got your back. How are you building that culture um, within your company? What's your vision for what you want that to look like? Yeah, awesome. Um, and you know, I think this uh, applies to to any any industry, uh, any company that's uh, or startup or even established business that's that's building a company. Uh, it's it's the uh, it's it's being a very mission driven organization. You know, our our mission is to is to create deploy the best and most functional safety products to our military and first responders that are uh, protecting our country and community and keeping our families safe. I mean, I mean, that, that is really the driving force behind, uh, behind my company. And, um, you know, people, you know, my customers pick up on that. Um, you know, of course I am, uh, you know, I have to be a, a profitable organization to, to exist, but, um, my, you know, my, my mission is, is that. So, um, and we we're also a, a a company that has uh, a very specific culture. You know, I've I've designed the culture of my company based on the value on my own my own personal value system, uh, something similar to it. So, um, and every every subcontractor, every employee, every consultant that I engage with is uh, is is they're they're fully clear, crystal clear on you know why we are doing what we're doing. And you know the uh, the the culture of uh, of my company. So um, that that way, and that governs that governs all of our behavior. You know, we we are a company that operates with integrity. It's just a fine uh, you know example of the cultural that we want run. So um, it, you know, if if we make a mistake on an order, we send you know we we overcharge somebody. I you know we we're the first ones to pick up on it and correct it, and not you know let those those. Or, you know, we, we, uh, you know, in every interaction we have where it's, it's, it's value based. So, um, that's the type of organization that, uh, that I'm building. And I think, you know, ultimately is, is, is what will, will, will be long lasting. I think that's a great place for us to kind of turn a little bit from, we talked about the product development cycle. We talked about the, the purchasing cycle, right? Getting to know all of that information. And now what you're really talking about when you talk about the culture and leading back into customers, like what people might traditionally call customer experience, but really you've been talking about customer experience this whole time. So as you, as you move out of the, let's say the initial product development stage and you've got your product out there in the market, what do you see as the next phase of development for this, this experience as a whole? It's, it's spot on, Tony, and it, it still remains, uh, it, it remains a, a very customer-centric organization. So everything from my communications to uh, prospects uh, to my, my pitch deck when I go and direct sell to an organization, to my marketing collateral, to my website, you know, everything, everything that you will see there, it is, it is, it is specifically, you know, centric to the customer. So uh, you'll, you'll see the opening slide of my pitch deck as a, is a, is a, an air force pararescue operator hanging on a rope using uh, using a rope safe system. You'll see my YouTube channel. Uh, all, all my video content uh, is firefighters using, using this product. Uh, my quotes are, are based on real customer quotes um, and so it, it's, it's everything it's in the fabric of, of, uh, of, of really, you know, it's the customer voice because 
you know, I, I, I'm the CEO of the company, you know, and it's, and of course I'm going to say, you know, positive things about, about my product. Um, but, but it really, you know, once you, what, what, what builds significant credibility in, in, a, in a prospect's mind is when, uh, when a major customer uh, or, or even competitor per se has invested in, uh, in your solution. Um, so that, that's how I try to position, you know, my product in the marketplace is, is unique. So I have a pitch deck for first responders. I have a pitch deck for uh, defense department. I have a pitch deck for the commercial construction industry because they're all, you know, what is important to them, what is important to a firefighter compared to a construction worker compared to a soldier is unique. Um, and, uh, and, and why they would make a, a decision uh, to, to purchase your product is also unique. So, um, if, uh, that's ho- hopefully that, that answered your, uh, your question, Tony. Yeah, that, that was right on target. I think in, in the way you're, you're developing even further into now, how do I engage these people on an, on an ongoing basis? I think you're right on target with that. So, um, the one other thing that I know that came up as I was thinking about the way you talked about, you used this phrase when we talked earlier about how you wanted information so you could kill the product if it wasn't a good idea. And it ties back into something. And I think it's really important in the world we live in today where cash flow has really been constrained with businesses closing down and all of that. And it's not going to come back quickly. So people that are out there developing new products and doing those types of things, you know, you developed yours on a shoestring budget and that question was critical. So kind of take us back to that question and how you use that in different phases of your work and how you may use it today. Yeah, yeah, that is, um, I think it's a, it's really important, at least in my experience that, uh, that, that you seek out information that, um, that really, uh, just, just is, is contradictory to your own, your own perspective and, uh, and have the, uh, the willingness to, to kill a product. And, and so we've, we've all heard the old cliche, you know, 99 out of a hundred products fail in the marketplace. So, uh, so how much do you want to, uh, how much capital do you really want to invest in this, in, in this specific solution? Um, and I know it's completely different for software companies. Um, but the, 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 the principle is the same. You know, I, I went out with a very early prototype of, uh, of RopeSafe that cost me $40. Um, but it had the, uh, it had the, the, the basic design concept so that I can get feedback and understand, you know, is this a, is this a viable solution to a real problem? And uh, at any point in time, as you, as you mentioned, you know, I'd, I'd ask questions that it would help me evaluate, is this actually worth my time, energy, and effort and, and capital to, to, to keep going? And, uh, and I was ready to, at, a, at any point in time during the development process, to just kill this idea. You know, if, it didn't, if, if, our, if I had multiple data points from multiple customers uh, that said, hey, John, this is neat, but I wouldn't buy it or John, this is neat, but we have a good enough solution. And, you know, or, or John, uh, you know, I, I, I like what you're doing here, but um, I'm just really, yes, this doesn't excite me. So, you know, I, 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 I was, I was prepared myself for that potential outcome. And, uh, and during each interaction, when, um, you know, when it became evident that, well, there, there actually is a, uh, there actually is a problem and, and this solution does address this. Um, then that gave me, you know, data, real, real data to, to then make the next level of investment in the product um, and minimize my, my cost, my cost exposure. That's awesome, John. Um, switching gears a little bit, one of the things we like to do on the show is give our guests an opportunity to give a shout out to any community organizations that they may be supporting or participating in, sitting on the board for. So tell us a little bit about what you do in terms of community um, while raising three kids and running a business. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, the, uh, I, I'm incredibly grateful for the Institute for Military Veterans and Families, uh, the IVMF. Uh, they're, they're based in Syracuse. 
uh, as well as the, uh, the, the Entrepreneurial Boot Camp for Veterans with Disabilities program. Um, and uh, I, I had the, uh, the, the good fortune to participate in that uh, program through the University of Connecticut. Uh, if there are any veterans that are, that are listening, um, I'd be happy to, to share more about that program and, uh, and connect you with the, uh, the program director. Uh, but it's a, uh, it's a 10 day long intensive, you know, entrepreneurial training, uh, that gives you the fundamentals, the building blocks for how to run a business. I, I didn't know how to run a business. I, I mean, uh, I thought I knew, but I actually didn't know. Um, and so I, uh, that, that program you know, one really, you know, gave me some very foundational skills necessary to, uh, to, to run a business and two, but also in, uh, introduced me into uh, a, a community that, uh, the, that is, that just has just a sea of goodwill. This just wants to help, uh, you know, veteran uh, entrepreneurs be, uh, be successful. So the IVMF and the Yukon Entrepreneurial Bootcamp for Veterans Progra uh, Program. Awesome. Awesome. Tony, you have anything else you want to ask John? No, I think we covered everything that I wanted to ask. All right, John. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate your time. We're very inspired by your story and um, really looking forward to watching your trajectory because clearly you're doing a lot of things right. And um, I have to think that success is all but guaranteed for you. So thank you so much for being here today. And uh, thank you very much, Betsy. And if folks uh, want to follow my uh, my story on Instagram, I'm I'm at Rope Safe USA, and that's uh, that's for my Instagram and, and Facebook and website as well. So awesome, great! I'm glad you said that because we uh, definitely want our audience to be able to reach out to you if they have the um, the interest to do that. So cool. again, thank you, John. Stay well, and um, best wishes to you and your family and your team at um, Rope Safe. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Betsy and Tony. Wow, John is just an amazing person. And his vision for what he wants to create and how he's getting there is so fascinating. I think the thing that stands out most to me is that, that level of, you use the word discipline, um, but there was also that spirit underlying it all, that vulnerability to hearing bad news and a desire to know what that bad news is so that he can take it and make improvements. So often we don't see that in the world today, especially in business, which is as we wrote in our book about unfiltered listening, he's going right there as a CEO, as the inventor of the product and doing as much unfiltered listening as possible. Yeah. And you know, it just, it just strikes me just that warrior attitude, like bring it, man, bring the, bring the bad feedback. I'm, I'm ready for it. I want to learn from it. I want to overcome it. And I just, I love the spirit um, that he brings to the table and also just the complete, you know, when he was talking about the, the mission, mm -hmm. he's so mission driven. And I love that, that spirit. And it's so grounded in the customer which is really kind of what we're here to talk about, you know, is when your mission is in alignment with the customer and you really get to know your customer. So I, um, I just found so much value in so many different points that he made. Um, so I, was, I just thought it was just a fantastic interview. The one thing that's unlocking for me as we've done some of these interviews, and I think with, with John here, he really put his finger on it. There's not just the product development cycle that you need to have your customers in. It's the purchasing cycle. Who's going to mm -hmm. buy this product? Who's going to approve this product? Who's got, who needs to sign off on it, right? There's all those different people within an organization, especially in a B2B world. But even the B2C, it's like, if I'm buying something, do I have to check with my wife? Do I have to check with my kids, right? Um, so those are things that are so important for us to think about, not just the product development itself. And then fast forward, once your product is in the market, how do you develop that customer experience? And it's not something that's just sort of out there. It's really, how are they experiencing the use of my product? How do they implement my product? How do, they, how do we onboard them into this, this lifestyle of using my product or my service? And I think John is doing such an amazing job of that. And we touched on just a few elements of that in the interview. Yeah, he, he really is doing, from a process standpoint on how to build a company, he's, he's, he could write a book for sure on, you know, these are the steps you have to take. So, 
Yeah. Well, I think that wraps up our podcast interview with John Norton. Thank you so much for being here and joining us for these conversations. We hope you're getting a lot of value and we look forward to seeing you next time on the Really Know Your Customer podcast. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Really Know Your Customer. We hope you gained a lot of value from being here today. If you want to learn more about the work Betsy and Tony do to help their clients thrive, visit Betsy at thecongruitygroup.com and Tony at tonybodo.com. See you next time on the Really Know Your Customer Show.